Yeah. Um, last week I had to vent a little bit about the new browser, uh, but today, this week, I'm back with a, a new uh, sound design tutorial. So yeah, let's uh, dive in. First, um, delete everything and start with the blank slate. Well, so first let's grab a sampler, uh, sample and drag it in here. And I know this sample is exactly one bar long and we're gonna use this information. Um, first, let's up, open up these modulators and drop in an LFO. Okay, um, open it up and turn its shape to sawtooth. Now I know the sample is one bar long, so we can just set the quantization here to one bar as well. And I want it to be quantized and I want it to follow the playhead position. Okay, now here we can switch sample position to manual by pressing on this freeze button and then use the arrow here and modulate the position with the LFO. Um, I also want to switch it or change it to unipolar. Now let's see. Nice. Um, this is exactly the sample as we had before, but now it is also pitched uh, into 145 BPM from its original 138. And you can hear the pitch changes when I, and you can also see how the arrow, uh, the, the, the playhead moves differently through the sample at lower speeds. Okay, back to 145. And now, well, that's already quite cool, but how does it help us? Now we want to uh, maybe subdivide this sample into eight nodes or 16 nodes so that we can then jump around and do interesting stuff. But and now we're uh, going through the entire length. Um, so we need to uh, do some math to uh, confide the modulation to a certain area. And what we need is a math module and we need a quantization module. So, okay. Uh, on the one hand, we want the incoming LFO signal and we exact want exactly 100%. Okay. And we need a multiplication factor, but we cannot enter um, numbers in here. We just have a percentage value which is a bit limiting, but yeah, it works. Because here we have the quantization uh, module where we just uh, can say, well, we want to divide everything into 16 and now use that and modulate the multiplying side, 100%. And now look what's, what's happening here. I now jump from one discrete value to the next. And it happens to be one sixteenth of 100%. So when I now remove this modulator from here and apply this one. Okay. Now you can see that it only runs through a portion of the sample and this, uh, it seems to be quantized, right? This is a, this is where something else starts. And at the moment, these are two units, so two sixteenths. Now we have half of that. So, but of course, now it's um, way too slow. So let's change that. Let's move it maybe to 16 now. And so I want to do it differently. I want to, so um, this divided by four would be 0 0.25, 0 0.25 divided by two is 125.125, right? Yes, okay. Uh, well, it will set it to 13, but internally it uh, operates, Bitwig operates with floating point operators that this is not going to be a problem. This will be absolutely precise. Okay, let's go. Now we're back to the original speed. And the reason I have done this with 
I haven't done it here is that I want to be able to switch to the other quantization values. And as you can see here, we have dotted values and I don't want um, to get into the dotted values. Okay, you will understand in a minute what I'm talking about. Now, let's grab a step module. Reduce the number of steps. I want eight in this case. And now we can um, use, no, here. Now we can use the steps module to change this value here. Or can we? Am I talking nonsense? Probably. Um, yeah, that's why I was talking about the LFO. We want to use uh, the steps. Pull this all the way up to modulate the division here uh, in this direction. One, two, and three. Two, three, and let me look at the drop down. Now we're at the half notes, then one, two, three. Yeah, we can do one more before we get into triplets. So. Now let's listen to it. Okay, uh, now we can control the speed of this LFO or how fast we play back this sample. But, uh, well, that's cool, but uh, we would like to play all the other samples or the other content in here as well. Let's duplicate this one. This has already the settings. Okay, now first we need a quantizer. Quantize module. And well, we can, by entering the resolution, we can tell it how many divisions we want here. In this case, I want to start with 16. And now use the steps module to modulate the input 100% and then use the quantization value and assign it to the position. Okay, so we're standing still. So when I modulate this value here, you should see it change, yeah. And as you can see, it's always quantized. Okay, now let's listen to that. Yeah, you can see it's already a lot more interesting like this. So now we could potentially yeah, modulate the filter. Well, let's, let's take a random module for this. Assign the filter modulation. Uh, this one bipolar and then select a filter. Well, set this to 16th notes. I 
shouldn't be free, it should be synced. Okay, cool, but now let's make it even worse <laughs> or better. Now let's grab um, a pitch, pitch shifter. Pitch shifter is a very nice um, granular module and I love the way it sounds. And let's first just group that and now go here. Add a macro. Um, duplicate this. Now the assign the first one to the grain. So that's kind of a good starting point. Make the second one bipolar and assign it to the pitch. Well, semitones. Okay. And what I like to do is to, you know, have two of these modules because it just sounds a bit more extreme. And that's also why I assigned these macros first. So I command D. Now this modulation is uh, assigned to both of these. Now we can uh, use another, well, let's say a step module or a random module, obviously, to uh, control the pitch. Let's make it bipolar. Yeah, something like this. And apply this to the pitch. And maybe a little bit in the opposite direction. To the grain size. Okay, okay, that is not yet quite as fancy as I want it to be. Yeah, it's sometimes interesting to uh, introduce a little bit of, um, what is that, smoothing here, so that it actually interpolates between uh, these two values. Well, of course, I mean, instead of the steps module, you can uh, use the, the curves or whatever. Now that we have this, maybe it's also a good idea to add some reverb. Um, and maybe, yeah, reduce this size. Yeah, I only want the early reflections. And now let's use another steps. Would be nice if we could save our own defaults here as well. So um, now just control the mix with this. And before maybe something stuttering, let's go to user, I have this stutter probability. Uh, we've done something very similar in a previ previous tutorial. I'll probably link it. 
So, and now let's listen. Yeah, and now that we have this, um, it's now very easy to, you know, just drop in another sample and then listen to what. Yeah, uh, randomize the position. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, this is it. Um, I think this is really uh, interesting. You have to play around with the parameters. You have to uh, try out different samples. But as you can hear, I mean, the results are very glitchy, quirky, psychedelic, and unpredictable, which is exactly what I like. So yeah, leave a like, subscribe if you want more like this, and uh, see you next